in the music industry. I got to the music industry by a guy by the name of Tupac Shakur. As I noticed that most of you guys, if not everybody in this room, I'm sure heard of Tupac before. The time that I met Pac was from Yafeo. He happened to one day tell me that Tupac was coming to New York City and I was able to go over there, get acquainted with Yafeo, and I was able to meet Tupac for the first time. The first time that I met Pac, he walked in a room and I was expecting him to come in there all wild, like a gangster or a thug, but he walked in there, he was very soft-spoken, he was very humble, and he started to ask me questions about the death of my mother and father. He said, I heard you witness your mother and father get murdered in front of you. Why don't you tell me the story? So I remember telling Tupac the story, and he started to cry. I seen tears coming down his face. And I was surprised because this was the first time that somebody reacted this way from the story of my, the death of my mother and father. Many of us in my neighborhood, this was almost normal to not have a mother and father. Many of my friends don't know who their father is. Many of them don't know who their mother is. So growing up in my neighborhood, I never felt different or special because I didn't know my mother and father. Or I didn't, wasn't raised by my mother and father. So Tupac said, I want to put a rap group together and I want to help you and I want you to be part of this rap group. A few months later, I was able to travel to Atlanta, Georgia to the house of Tupac. And that's when he said, the name of this rap group, eventually after going through a period of names and different names, he said, I'm going to call you guys the Outlaws. Operating under thug laws as warriors. And he said, I want to give you guys names of so-called enemies of the West or so-called tyrants. So one by one, Tupac started to give us these names. For example, Yafeo. Tupac gave him the name Gaddafi after the Libyan president, Muammar Gaddafi. Another member of the Outlaws, Tupac gave him the name Hussein after the former Iraqi president, Saddam Hussein. Another member of the Outlaws, Tupac gave him the name um, Fadu. No, I already said Fadu, that's Hussein. Castro, after the Cuban president, Fidel Castro. Tupac changed his name to Machiavelli. And when I was young, I had a very, very bad temper. Can you turn the lights on a little bit? I just like to see the faces because I want to make sure I'm not boring nobody out there. When, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. when I was young, I had a very, very bad temper to the point, man, that my black side of the family, they always blamed it on my mother's side of the family, which happened to be Puerto Rican and Cuban. But when I met Tupac, I had that same type of aggressiveness. I had that same type of attitude with me. So Tupac had a joke. He said the reason why I had this aggressiveness and this attitude was because of my height. He said I had the short man complex. In other words, it's known as the Napoleonic complex named after the French emperor, Napoleon Bonaparte. The first record that I ever performed on was a record called Me Against the World. This record sold approximately about three or four million records at that time. Right at that same time, Tupac happened to go to New York City, turn the lights on up a little. <laughs> right, at, right around that, because it's like I'm just talking to nobody, I can't see that. <laughs> right around that same time, just acting like okay, thanks. Right around that same time, Tupac happened to go to New York City because he was fighting a court case. And he happened to one day walk into a recording studio, and he happened to get into the elevator. Two gunmen, they followed him in the elevator, they pressed the emergency stop button, they pulled out guns, and they shot Tupac five times. And it took $40,000 worth of jewelry from Pop. Now the people that did this to Pop, they basically tried to murder him. He was friends with a gangster from New York City. He had a falling out with this gangster. And he decided to murder Tupac, put an end to it forever. Tupac, that time he survived the shooting. A few weeks later, a few months later, he got arrested. And he did a year and a half in prison. While he was in prison, he got approached by a guy by the name of Suge Knight. How many of you guys heard of Suge Knight? For those who don't know Suge, he was from Compton, California, six feet seven, 365 pounds, and he was the CEO of a record company called Death Row Records. The first artist that he put out on Death Row Records was a rapper by the name of Dr. Dre and a rapper by the name of Snoop Dogg. He approached Tupac and said, I will put up the million dollar bail, I will bail you out of prison, and that's how myself and the rest of the outlaws, we ended up in Los Angeles, California. When we ended up in LA, it was different. It was different street codes from growing up in, a, in New Jersey. In Los Angeles, you had Bloods, you had Crips, you had Hispanic, Mexican Mafia gangs, you had all types of gangs. 
And then the height of, when we went to Los Angeles, it was the height of gang activity. To the point that if you go into a neighborhood of Crips with a red shirt on, it was a 99% chance that you might get your head blown off. It was real hectic out there. So Tupac decided to do music. He wanted to stay in the recording studio, he wanted to work. He put a record out called All Eyes On Me. Myself performed on about six, seven songs on his record. That record sold over 20 million records worldwide today. Around the same time, Tupac took a break and he went to Las Vegas to a Mike Tyson fight. And he happened to get into a fight with an individual who happened to be from a neighborhood that was the opposite of the neighborhoods of Suge Knight in Compton, California. They happened to be from a neighborhood of Crips. Suge Knight was from a neighborhood of Bloods. So this been a feud, this been a beef that been happening ever since the people was kids. Tupac got into a fight with this individual. A few hours later, Tupac was driving in the car with Suge Knight. Some of the members of the Outlaws was in the car right behind him. It was in an entourage of about 30 cars. One car pulled up on the side of Tupac, open fire. They shot Pac 13 times. When I got the phone call that Pac got shot, the first thing that came in my mind that he's a strong dude, he's gonna make it. When I went to the hospital and I'm seeing him lying in the hospital bed, I knew that he was in a critical situation. Six days later, Tupac died. He was only 25 years old. After the death of Tupac, me and Gaddafi, who was my childhood friend and the guy that introduced me to Tupac, we went back to New Jersey. I got myself in some trouble when I was in New Jersey and I told myself that once I get out of the cell, I'm going to get Gaddafi, we're going to leave New Jersey. Gaddafi wasn't ready to come, so I introduced him to a little cousin of mine. I figured that if Gaddafi stay in New Jersey, I introduced him to my little cousin who had a rep. My little cousin was around 13, 14 years old. He always carried a gun, and he was known to use that gun. So I figured if he went Gaddafi, Gaddafi is in good hands. Tupac died in September. I, got a, I left New Jersey in October. I got a phone call in November that Gaddafi just got shot. When I asked the person on the other end of the phone who shot Gaddafi, she said, Napoleon, it was your little cousin. So for me, I couldn't see what would make my little cousin shoot Gaddafi. Unfortunately, three days later, Gaddafi died from a single gunshot wound to the face. He was only 17 years old. I flew to New Jersey. My cousin admitted that he shot Gaddafi. He said I was high on drugs. I was playing with a loaded gun. I pointed to his face. The gun accidentally went off. My cousin spent 12 years of his life in prison. Prison in America is different than prison in Norway. Prison in America, man, people get murdered every single day. Prison in America, man, you gotta fight for your life every single day. My cousin had, had to live in that environment for 12 years. So after the death of Tupac, the death of Gaddafi, this was a hard blow on me and the rest of the outlaws. We didn't know which way to turn, but we decided to continue to do music. We put a record out called Still I Rise. This record was very close to the heart of me and the rest of the outlaws because it was a record that we was doing that we produced right before Tupac and Gaddafi died. So we had the lyrics of Tupac and Gaddafi on this record. We released this record, and this record sold 1.5 million records worldwide. And I remember this particular time in my life that money started to come in. At this time of my life, I was able to purchase three brand new houses. Every time a car would come out, man, I would be the first person at the dealership making sure that I'm the first person in LA with that car. And I remember telling myself, this is what I left New Jersey for. This is what I left the hood. This is the ultimate happiness. This is the American dream. Houses, money, cars, jewelry, fame. But I noticed every single night I put my head down, I was depressed. And I started to ask myself, how come I have money? How come I have cars, money, jewelry, whatever, but in my heart I had no happiness. So I didn't know where to turn for happiness, so I turned to drugs. Every single day of my life, I would walk outside of my house and I would be...